Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I want to talk to you about my five tips for off-road e-biking. Now what I'm talking about here is recreational off-roading. I'm not talking about crazy downhill courses or flying through the air on big jumps. I'm talking about hitting up your local park or your local rail to trail network and just getting around and, and having some fun off-road. That's the kind of riding that I really love to do when I'm trying to get away from my normal commuting or city riding. And so it's that kind of recreational off-road riding that we're gonna talk about today. Now the first major tip that I have for any time I'm hitting the trails is more battery is always your friend. When you're choosing an e-bike that you want to head off-road with, more battery is always a good idea. This is the Aventon Adventure here. It's got a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. That's 720 watt hours. And that is like a minimum for me for when I head off-road because I want to have a longer experience and riding off-road really eats into that battery quickly. The first time you head off-road, you might be surprised just how quickly you're going through that battery. And it's because it just takes a lot more energy. There's a lot more resistance when you're going through dirt and sand and grass and anything that isn't a smooth trail. We're starting to see more and more larger batteries, so the bigger you can get, probably the better. A lot of people don't like to have too much weight on their bike and they think that a big battery is gonna weigh them down, but the fact of the matter is with an electric bike, you're not really paying that weight penalty because you have the extra assist. So more battery, always your friend. If you can get a bike with a bigger battery, that's great. Or if you've got a smaller battery, you know, we still see a lot of these 48 volt 10 amp hour batteries out there. So even smaller batteries like that, maybe bring a second one just so you have more time out there on the trails. Another thing to consider, and maybe this is tip 1.5, is to start using that pedal assist a little bit more. That'll really help make that battery last longer. Look, I love using my throttles. It's fun to treat a throttle e-bike like a dirt bike and just, you know, mash that throttle and go for it. Trust me, I love it but I try and use pedal assist more and more when I'm off-road just to make the experience last longer and you actually really get into it. You know, you feel like you're more a part of a machine than just sitting on top of it. If you're already using pedal assist, that's great. If you're not, consider trying it and seeing how it might improve your off-roading experience, not just making that battery last longer, but also just making it more of a fun ride. Next up, let's talk braking. And here's where I'm gonna recommend going with two finger braking or even one finger braking. A lot of people make the mistake of using all four fingers on those brake levers. Maybe they got used to that while riding a bike on the streets and that might be fine for casual bike lane riding. But when you head off road and you need more control of that handlebar, you're gonna to wanna to keep more fingers wrapped around the bars and you'll end up with fewer fingers for brakes. Generally, I find myself doing two finger braking while I'm off road and one finger braking while I'm on the street. Some people do it the other way around. They like to only use one finger on the brakes when they're off road so that they have more fingers holding the bars. Now, the more technical of a trail you're doing, the more control you're gonna need of the bars. So it really depends on the type of riding you do but get used to keeping more fingers wrapped around the bars and fewer on the brake levers. It's weird in the beginning to change it, especially if you've been riding one way your entire life, but having more control of the bar is important and you'll find that you can still get good braking force using just one or two fingers. Now, if you have hydraulic brakes like the Adventure here does, it's gonna be a lot easier to go with one finger braking. I know for some people that sounds crazy, what, I'm only gonna use one finger on my brake levers, but with good hydraulic disc brakes, you really only need one finger to get a good pull. Next up, tip number three, let's talk tires. There's two things here. One, getting the right tires for the type of trails you're using, and two, getting the right type of puncture protection. So here we've got these big four inch fat tires, and I love these for all sorts of recreational trail riding. You know, we're talking fairly flat trails, fairly gentle curves, nothing crazy, no hard switchbacks, that sort of thing. These tires can roll over just about anything. If you hit a root or a hole unexpectedly, you're barely gonna feel it with these big fat tires. So I really like them for that purpose. The only problem is if you ever get a flat, oh man, these things are not fun to have to push a bike back with. With smaller mountain bike tires, at least you can fairly easily push a flat tire, but these big old fat tires, not fun to push with no air in them. So I definitely recommend sliming your tires. When I talk about slime, I use a few different brands. I mean, this is the actual slime brand. I have no affiliation with any of these. This is a pretty good one. I also use this orange seal. Basically all of these things I see as fairly comparable. Some people swear by one or another or Joe's or Stan's. Whatever sealant you use, just make sure you keep it in your tires and replenish it every I don't know, three, four months or so, because it does start to dry out depending on the brand and the formula. 
but these are just a huge advantage for anyone that does off-roading and doesn't want to be pushing a bike back with a flat tire. You won't know how many times it's saved you from getting a puncture because when it works you don't really notice it, but each one of those is a huge impact because it is the worst thing to be stuck in the middle of a trail without air in your tires and having to drag that big heavy bike back. Next, go easy on the accessories. On this bike, I actually have racks that I put on them, which is great for when I'm going back and forth between doing you know, city, commuting, utility style riding and trail riding. But when I do hit the trails, I'll often take those racks and baskets off just because they're unnecessary. It's extra weight, it slows you down. And if you're somewhere with lots of branches and limbs, they can get caught on things. So go easy with the accessories when you're on the trails and consider paring down if you're gonna be on anything a little more technical or a really crowded trail with lots of limbs and brush and bushes. Last but not least, when it comes to those turns, look where you are going. I know that sounds really basic, but here's what I mean. Lots of times you'll get into a turn and you'll be going faster than you realize, and all of a sudden you see that wall of the turn coming at you a lot quicker. You focus on it because you start getting freaked out that maybe you're gonna run over it, and then you get target fixation and you just have to hit the brakes to keep from running right off of the trail. The way to combat that is to actually look further down the turn. Don't look at the wall of the turn heading at you. Look where you wanna go and your body's just gonna figure it out. It's the same thing for motorcycles. It's the same thing for skateboards. Basically, when you look where you wanna turn, your body is going to use whatever muscle memory it has to figure out how to make that turn. And you're not gonna rely on your actual conscious mind having to say, all right, I need to push the bars this far to keep from running off the edge. Your body's just gonna figure it out for you. So make sure you're just always looking further down the turn to prevent that paranoid, I'm gonna run out of the turn feeling. All right, so those are five tips that I always use when I'm heading off the road to do some recreational trail riding. I hope they were helpful to you guys, and if there's something that you think I should add to those tips, put it in the comment section below, because I want to hear what you guys think and what you do when you head off-road. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner from the giveaway of my last video, and the randomly selected commenter that will win a free copy of one of my books is... Cowl5005. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a free copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.